Hi you guys, welcome back to another first impression video. Today we're gonna be looking at Simplicity's Early Spring Collection. If this is your first time watching one of these videos, this is a series that I do where I take a look at a pattern company's entire collection, whether that's an indie pattern designer's entire catalog, or when the Big Five releases new um, seasonal releases, I'll review all of them that were released at once. So it's a really fun way to look at the patterns and maybe notice some things that you didn't before, but we'll talk about um, some fit issues if I see any, things to look out for whenever you're worrying about fitting the garment for yourself. We'll talk about fabrication, we'll look at the suggested fabrics, but I'll also throw out some other ideas that come to mind as I am looking at the pattern and just kind of check out the overall design and get a vibe for what is coming down the pipeline in terms of home sewing, fashion, design, all that kind of stuff. So let's jump right in. We are going to start with a Mimi G cape. Mrs. Cape by Mimi G. Um, alphanumeric sizing. It looks like all the sizes are all in one envelope. So extra small to 2XL. We'll look at exactly what that means when we get to the um, back of the envelope. But it is described as cropped trench cape with pointed collar. Includes cargo pockets with inverted pleats and flaps. Cape includes a storm flap, buttons, and button and front button tabs for convertible sleeves. Oh, I know what they mean by that. Okay. What do we think about the bullets? That's interesting and new and different. Does that make it easier for you guys to read? Um, I mean, I guess a little bit. I mean... Certainly bullet points always help a little bit, right? <laughs> I don't know if the if the verbiage, like the actual words they use are any more clear, but okay, there's, there's two things to look out for here. Okay, looking at the photos. So, pointed collar with like a collar stand. So this is up on your neck, um, like a trench would be. This is the storm flap. There's a pocket here, which you can also see here. And then, there are convertible sleeves. You know how you roll them up and then you button them somewhere, but I'm not seeing that here. So that's what I thought they meant, but maybe I'm wrong. And then there's also this like really kind of cool asymmetrical thing happening. There she is again. Yeah, it's like it ends at your high hip, but then has like some drapey things coming down. I think that that creates a really beautiful flattering silhouette. Um, for all body types, Mimi's definitely a pair. Um, I'm a pair, so I look at her like, oh, that's me. Um, and yeah, it seems like for something that's so kind of oversized and, you know, it's not making her look bigger, that's for sure. Oh, that's all we're going to get in photos. Okay, well. Maybe the line drawings will help. Actually, let's go there first. Okay, interesting. Wow. All right, so. Man, we're going to need some instructions on how to wear this thing. So there's the storm flap. Is this just not functional because you just put this all over your head? Or do you need to undo this because the neckline is so close fitting? And then this is the button tab that attaches to these buttons to make it a convertible sleeve. But what does that mean exactly? Does that mean sometimes your arm goes through here? If you button it, it makes it like closed around your arm. And if you don't button it, then it's just loose. Is that what's happening? Because this matches up with this, right? That's logical. Hmm. We also didn't get any photos of the back, and so this is the back flap that it has. Yeah, my best guess is that you put it on over your head. Maybe you have to unbutton some of these to get into it. I'm not sure. And then you can either button this and it's like buttoned underneath your arm so that when you raise your arm, lower your arm, move around. I don't know what the benefit of that would be. 
but they're um you know how sometimes the capes will have like a baby side seam just to keep it like around your body this doesn't have that this is fully like you just drape it on over your shoulders okay so back to the back envelope we are looking at broadcloth these are suggested fabrics broadcloth cotton blends denim lightweight wool types linen blends gabardine stretch wovens tweed and twill I'm pretty sure what she's wearing is like one of those like kind of sporty fabrics, like a wicking polyester type of thing. Um, yeah, hers looks a little more slick than any of these suggestions. Broadcloth cotton blends. Yeah, it's hard for me now to picture it in anything other than what she's wearing it as because that's just so logical you know but you got to think about it the intention behind this the inspiration behind this is a trench coat so anything you'd make yeah for sure like a cotton sateen that might be what she's wearing because it has that sheen to it hers just seems a little bit more lightweight yeah um linen blends gabardine stretch wovens tweed twill yeah, I don't know, because it's so trench coat, right, with the flaps and everything, I'm having a hard time seeing it in anything other than what you would see a normal trench coat in, which would be denim, but mostly like that khaki color, you know, olive for sure, black, absolutely. Yeah, I'm having a hard time seeing it as anything other than that. I can't imagine it like in a plaid or something or stripe I, it's got to be a solid in my mind i don't know i'll be eager to see um what people come up with in terms of fabric choices for this one okay we've just got for notions just some buttons to go around um it looks like 13 of them that's kind of a lot um and then i said already that the sizing goes it's all in one and it goes from extra small to 2x that means it's a, I mean, it's very roomy garment, but, um, 29 and a half inch bust up to 48. And then the hip is kind of negligible because it's doesn't really hit your low hip. Plus it, that's like the fullest part of it. So I would go off your high bust measurement that way, the shoulder and everything and the neckline, that's really what you care about fitting is that neck band. Um, and then the shoulders draping from there, <clears throat> excuse me, which is taken from your high bust measurement. So that's what I would go off of. Okay, great. Finished garment measurements are negligible, but they are um, in the, well, they aren't included on the back. You're, I guess they're probably on the pattern pieces, but the length might be important. So I guess that's helpful too. Um, Cause you don't want it to be too long. That would be very overwhelming. So if you're a petite person and normally take, uh, length adjustments, like you shorten things a lot, uh, maybe measure. You would be measuring from like, well, in theory, I don't know. You're supposed to measure if like you get a necklace on from like where that necklace hits your back neck down to like the bottom of this, whatever they say the measurement is. But this one, I don't know if they're including that high collar or not. If so, that would be like your hairline. Yeah. All right. Next, we have the other Mimi pattern, super cute little set, top and skirt in two lengths, and it's misses and women's sizing. So that's a 10 to 18, and then a 20 women's to a 28 women's. The women's sizing, even though, wait, what am I saying? The women's sizing is done off of a different block. This is a different bust size than this one. So if you normally wear a 20 or 22 in misses, it's not necessarily the same as a 20 W or 22 W. They are different. Um, so choose accordingly. It might be better for you to make, like if you have a smaller bust, um, it might be better for you to stick with the misses sizing and then make size adjustments to make it larger this way than it would be to start with the larger bust cup 
and try and figure all of that out, especially because this seems to be kind of a corsety type of vibe. Yes, that's what it says right here. Cropped corset top with bust cups has underwire for support. Oh, nice. Skirt has slightly lowered waist. Oh, I see. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. And is offered in two length variations. Top and skirt both have side zippers. Top has separate pattern pieces for B, C, and D cups for misses, and then C, D, and double D cups for women. So that's a little bit like what I was talking about. Um, if you're a B cup, but you're a size 18 or 20, or I'm sorry, 20 or 22, it would be better for you to make the misses 18 and figure out how to size up, you know, like make your seam allowances smaller, whatever you need to do to size up. Um, if you're a C or D, you can do either. And if you're a double D, again, it's going to be easier to make the women's sizes and then size down if you need to. I hope all that makes sense with the sizing, but just know that women, that misses and women's are not like the numbers aren't the same. They're not all created equal in that regard. Okay. So we have got like bust cups. She did say that there was underwire which I'm honestly having a hard time seeing because that's supposed to be for support. So you would think it would be lifting her and you wouldn't have this fold. Hmm. Maybe the underwire that she uses is just a little thin. I don't know. Um, and then you have this, you know, it, um, I guess, this is all one, so it's not like a band or anything, but you know, it extends down to your natural waist. And then the skirt, this is what they meant by it being lowered a little. If the skirt sat at the natural waist, these two things would touch, but she wanted them to have a little bit of space so you could tell that they were two separate things. Um, if you don't want that, you have plenty of options. One, you can attach these together to make a dress. Um, you just put one waistline at the other waistline and you sew them together. You can either leave the waistband or remove it and just attach the skirt to this thing. Um, or you can raise the skirt up and just make it, essentially you'd just be making it smaller around to fit higher up on your body. Ish. But the skirt also has the panels that match up with the panels in the bodice. This little suede version, see how much more structure this skirt has? Also the top, so that's why it's not folding over as much as this one is. There's just a lot more structure to the fabric and that's what's holding her up. I'm not entirely sure that the that the underwire is underwiring here. Um, if you've ever made uh, undergarments before, bra specifically, I would pay attention to what she recommends for notions and how she's doing this and see if that lines up with your normal bra making stuff. I've never made a bra before. Not like a proper one with like underwire and padding. Um, so yeah, check into that. Especially if you are like, like the underwire part was very, very appealing to you and you want that to work like you think it's going to work in your brain. Um, for sure, double check that. And then this is like a little mini version, super cute still. What kind of shoes does she have here? Oh yeah, just a little heel still. Equally cute with like a little sneaker, I think. Yeah, this is a sweet, sweet little silhouette. Yep, just all the same sort of pictures. Here's the back. Okay. So the back of the bodice looks really good. Nice and fitted. I would say also that if you didn't want to do the zipper here and you just wanted something to pull on, it would be really easy to like double the width of this panel and then do shirring so you can just pull it on really easily. Um, also, a bit of a pointed cup here two pointed for her um so just you know of course she'll be fitting this because it is such a fitted garment but um you know that's something to look out for and then on the skirt her usual i think this is pretty common for mimi to have 
um, some kind of buckling happening here with the fabric. Um, and that happens a lot with us fuller bummed, <laughs> fuller butted <laughs> women um, because the waistband is being pushed down and then the low hip is being pushed up. So it would just, it's, it's how oh, you guys are all going to say it's a sway back adjustment. It's not necessarily a sway back adjustment. It's a length adjustment. She's just shorter here than the pattern is allowing for. You do take the same, it's the same alteration, but it's not necessary. Like a sway back is like a physical, like disability. Like that's, that's a really serious thing. It doesn't just mean your back is really curved. Um, it's usually if your back is curved like this, it's just also shorter. But it's like nowadays, I guess, in sewing, sway back and this length adjustment are kind of considered the same thing, even though in my mind they're not. But there we go. I know you can see those heels too. Okay, good. Let me see. Okay, that's it. All right, so suggested fabrics. Boucle would be adorable. Cottons, denim, linens, rayon, sateen. View A, the bodice also in brocades, damask, and taffeta. Why can't you make B and C out of those two? That doesn't make any sense. Um... It is lined. I assumed only the bodice would be lined, but let me see. How much lining fabric do you need? No, I don't think the bodice... Wait, hold on. How much does that say? Five, yeah, I don't think the bodice is lined. I think it's the waistband. I don't know. I, I would look into that and, and maybe figure out how to line the bodice. I don't know why. I'm just, <laughs> that's where, maybe not, maybe not. I don't know. I can't tell. Um, okay, so one separating zipper. Oh, okay. So the bodice zipper fully comes apart, which might be hard for some people to actually zip it. You know what I mean? So if that's the case and you're just like not a super flexible person, um, consider the shirring option. That's really easy convertible conversion to make. Pair of bra underwires for B, C, D, or, D oh, so B, C, D, or double D. Wait, that's all of them. There wasn't an A cup. I'd be interested to know if she left that out or if she included it. If anybody knows her and wants to like, you know, shoot her a message and then leave it in the comments and let me know. Um, and then for the skirt, an invisible zipper. Okay. So 10 to 18 is misses. Excuse me. 20 to 28 is women's body measurements. That's a 32, excuse me, 32 and a half inch bust up to 50 inches. The waist is obviously very important here too, 25 inches to 44. The hip, not so much because it is a fuller skirt. So just make the skirt based on your waist. And then the bodice, you really need to consider both of these. Um, but ease wise, we looks like we've got three inches in the bust. That feels like a lot. I would probably drop it down to two or for your in-between sizes, go to the smaller one. Um, and then as you go up in bust cup, you get an extra inch. Huh. Yeah, that's confusing. I don't think that's exactly how it works. I don't think if you're a 32 and a half inch double D, or sorry, 32 and a half inch D, that you would need five inches of ease. The ease shouldn't change, right? And then the waist for the skirts, they don't give the waist for the, for the top. So I guess they're counting on you to make that based off your bust measurement. But um, 26, 
yeah, an inch of ease in the waist. That makes sense for the skirt. So I would mimic that in the waist of the top. And then for the hip, like I said, that doesn't really matter. So yeah, some, some funky things to consider there, but that's with any garment that's going to be like super fitted, you know, like not just fitted circumference wise, but also considering your, um, like the fullness of your bust as well. Okay. So now we have a, um, in-house designer, Mrs. Dress with link variations. Simplicity cannot quit this little <laughs> design. There's been so many versions of this lately. Um, fitted color block dress has bodice with princess seams and bust starts. Dress comes in three lengths and can be made with or without sleeves. Dress A has a neckband, which I kind of actually love. And all views have side seam pockets, which I actually don't love. And I'll tell you why. Um, so a little mock neck. I love that. And I also kind of love how if you leave that off, it's very high neck. Oh, and there is actually a full bodice here. Okay, okay. This is the best version of this type of dress that I've seen from them. Um, this is the most well designed. Um, it doesn't look like there's a lot happening here, but there really is. So you've got the princess seams with the darts. You've got an actual waist seam. And then the little swoopies happen. Where, why didn't they make this version? This is beautiful. Um, obviously with chambray and the different shades of denim would be super, super cute. Um, and then they're just, again, color blocking with different options. Three options, two options. This is, I can't tell if this is lighter. I'm going to say yes. So three different options there. Um, so yeah. Okay. So a couple of things I'm noticing with the fit is that the sleeve on the sleeve less version is too, the, the shoulder width is too wide. It should be stopping right here. And there's not a sleeve band. It's just turned under. So I would just cut, 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 and give yourself more of an angle. It's just a lot more flattering, um, to have it cut away from the shoulder and for the shoulder width, the shoulder seam to end at that little intersection where your shoulder socket joins your, I don't know, shoulder bone <laughs> anatomy, not one of my strong suits. Okay. So in seam pockets, here's the problem. I'm sure that these are teardrop shaped and they just flap around and I don't like a floppy pocket. I like it to be anchored into something. So you do have some options. You could create a pocket that's this shape, right? And then on this side, it would come. Hmm, this is a little, this is a little bit of a long distance to go here. Um, you could do it this way and then do like a little chain stitch that attaches it to here. Just something to anchor it to the front um, so that it doesn't try and flop around to the back. And when you, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't know, maybe it's like a sensory thing. I just cannot do floppy pockets. Okay, those are all the same photos again. Same photo again. Okay, here's the back. Invisible zipper up the back, including the neck band. Wow, they really had some issues with this fabric. Um, that makes me think that this might be a little bit too small. So maybe add like, oh, like a quarter of an inch to it and see if that helps make that easier to attach. You do want it to be contoured to the body, you know, but I don't know if that's, that's just too hard to execute. I mean, if it's hard for their like super professional seamstresses to do it, I don't know how we're supposed to accomplish that at home, but you can see almost like right here is where this shoulder should end and it should scoop through here. So it's too long by like, gosh, two inches, maybe more. But you also have the princess seams here. This is your waist seam only goes halfway here. Some really interesting pieces to cut. This is probably going to be a fabric hog. Um, she does have her hip popped, so I'm not too worried about this kind of pulling away like that. And then other than that, it looks really pretty. It is a really beautiful eye-catching design. I think if you made this 
you know, and wore it really anywhere, church, otherwise, um, you would get a lot of compliments and attention for all the right reasons. It is really beautiful. Um, suggested fabrics are Chalet, Charmeuse, Crepe, Double Georgette, Lightweight Cotton Blends, Rayon, and Silky Type. So yeah, they're going for really lightweight and drapey. Um, the most structure is this cotton blend. But I would also tell you that, and I've said this, I think I say this in every one of these videos, but these fabric suggestions are also considering the time of year that the pattern is being released. So this is early spring. So they're trying to give you more springy type of fabrics. You could definitely still make this out of a ponte, a sateen, you know, any of those mid-weight types of fabrics. You could still do that. A twill, you know, even a rayon twill would be really beautiful. Um, you could still use those so long as it has the drape that you need for all of this. And in fact, I would say the lightest that you go, like for the chalet, for the, you know, 100% rayons, um, these curves all being on the bias like that are going to make those fabrics the most challenging. So consider that whenever you're picking your fabric. If you're new to sewing with curves, maybe don't go with the most lightweight drapey option. Try to find something a little bit more structured. Okay. Um, single fold bias tape. That's what they used, I think, for the, um, for the sleeve the arm opening and uh, that's A and that's C and B. I don't really understand that. Um, but yeah, I think that's for the arms, armholes and then invisible zipper. And then you need a slightly longer one for B and C. Why? A 24, you shouldn't need a longer zipper for that doesn't make any sense to me so i i don't know i would just buy the shorter one can you all think of what what am i missing here oh because of the neckline okay yeah 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 yeah. okay facts you do need a longer zipper to cover the um neckband duh okay great all right so then we have the sizing oh i didn't look at the thing but it might be four to 12 and then 14 to 20 or 4 to 12 and then 12 to 20 that way you get five in each that's a 29 and a half inch bust up to 42 inch bust and we also do not have finished garment measurements on the back here but it is pretty fitted through the bust and waist maybe three inches at most i would think for ease and then, yeah, picking your fabrics and all of that is going to, it's a, it's a math, um, problem in and of itself. Let's see this. Yeah. So the 12 does overlap. So four to 12 and then 12 to 20. I like the 12 to 20. Okay. Next we have a dress relaxed fit shirt dress with an elastic waist and side seam pockets includes an optional pointed collar and placket that can be made in a contrasting fabric dress has a forward drop shoulder forward drop shoulder okay with full pleated sleeves and elastic closures in two sleeve length variations dress also comes in two length options as well as a cut out at the back waist okay so Okay, interesting. What do we think of this number? Um, I think that this is going to be one of those where the fabric choice is going to make this hard for people to see it as something that they would wear. I think when you have this many design details, right, you've got the contrasting band with the collar with the big sleeve with the elastic with the cutout all of and it being maxi length too or midi length at least having that in a print is very very difficult um to pull off it's just a lot happening so i would challenge you to picture this in a solid no contrast so solid all around 
and then see if you can see yourself in it. Also, this fabric is kind of structured. I'm pretty sure it's a it's a cotton, maybe even a shirting. Um, picture it something a little bit drapier. Picture linen. Picture a rayon blend and see if that helps you visualize it. When you make it out of a lighter weight fabric, it is going to fall in on the body more. Um, and that would be one less design element, it being so full. If you want to lean into the fullness, by all means. Um, but I do think help, I do think seeing it in a solid will help you figure out if this is something you would actually wear. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed in this elastic situation. First of all, it feels low, but I'm giving them the, the benefit of the doubt because she's got her hands in her pockets and she could be pulling it down herself, which is what I know this is accounted for that. But is this also being pulled down? When I look at it here, this part here is what extends to be this. This feels like it's in ugh, close to the right place. It might be a little bit low, but not nearly as low as this one looks. So I would double check that for sure. And it does seem to be like, you know, falling to the back a little bit. I don't know. Can we leave this collar off? It would be a million times cuter without the collar. This is the one with just the collar stand, but I don't know. I would just leave this whole thing off and make a v-neck. That's it from far away. I don't know. Yeah, the collar is still not doing it for me. Even that, I don't know, maybe because they did it in the contrast. I'm, I don't know. Like, just put your hand over the screen and just cover up that collar part. Even if you left the button placket, but removed that, maybe. But it looks like it has, oh, that's the forward drop shoulder. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all in one. Do we like that better without the contrast at all? Certainly helps, I think. That kind of looks like a necktie, which could be cool. I don't know. What if we color, what if we just color blocked? Like this was green and this was, I don't know, white or something. Then would you look like a clergy person? I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's giving me a hard, like, it's making my brain work overtime. Um, I also wanted to see, is this, is the front, I want to see the line drawings, hold on one second, of the front. Is it supposed to be blousey? Because if so, then you would want the extra length from the high point shoulder to the elastic band because then the band would be fitted to your waist and then it would create this blousey effect. It doesn't seem to be super blousey. So that really doesn't make up for how long it looked on the fit model. Yeah. I don't, it has potential. It definitely, definitely has potential. I don't want to write it off completely, but um, it needs, it needs one or two fewer things happening, um, whether that's the contrast, the print, the fullness, something. All right, so cotton blends, gingham, linen blends, poplin, and shirtings. So all of those kind of stable woven, stable but lightweight woven fabrics. Um, yeah. I agree. Okay. I wouldn't go much lighter weight than like a cotton rayon blend or a linen rayon blend. I wouldn't go much lighter weight than that. I think it needs the structure for the sleeve. Um, and honestly for the skirt to be a little bit more full to balance out what's happening up here. You don't want the skirt to fall in on you too much because then that just makes you look really top heavy. Okay. So five buttons, some elastic, and single fold bias tape for B and C. So that's for the cutout or yeah, the back cutout. Okay. Six to 14 and then 14 to 22. That's probably my favorite of all the size ranges that they do. It just is the most inclusive while still being misses. 
It's the most inclusive of the Mrs. options. Um, so that's a 30 and a half inch bust up to 44 inches. The ease here is going to be significant. Yeah, 11 inches in the bust and even more than that in the waist, but I guess they didn't factor that with the elastic. So the waist is negligible and then they didn't give you the hip. So you're basing this off of your bust. You could easily, easily size down two or three sizes if you don't like it being super full. Um, but it's a very, very loose fitting garment. All right. Next, we have the women's version of the color blocked dress that we already looked at for Gina. So we've already looked at this. Let's just look at the pictures and kind of get a vibe for the fit in the women's version that they made the collarless version here. So you can get an idea of what that looks like. And they also made the sleeved version. I really appreciate that. I love when they make the total opposite version so we can get a, no matter what size range you're making, you can get a visualization of like what it looks like without the collar or with the sleeve. Um, and I want to point out that with the sleeve, the longer shoulder length isn't that big of a problem. Because this sleeve does not have a huge sleeve cap on it, meaning it comes up and over the shoulder, it's more um, meant to be kind of like a drop shoulder, it's fine. But when you go to make the sleeve less version, you should really have two different bodices, one with like a shorter shoulder length and one with a longer one, where this Vega with the sleeveless and sleeved dresses respectively there. Um, the fit, the length looks really good. Normally with plus size patterns, the length is funky because the, you guys are like just more petite through here and that's not accounted for, but this looks spot on. And they gave her the little, the little T length. I love this. Beautiful. All right. Let's see if we get something from the back. Sorry if you all just looked at your phones. <laughs> if you could hear that. I just turned it off. Okay. Um, yeah, so we've seen all of these, all of these. That's a fun version. Okay, here's the back. Okay, um, yeah, it's just too big for her in the waist. Um, but it didn't feel that way in the front. So interesting. I wonder if it's, no, that can't be. I was going to say, I wonder if it's because this has the waist seam and this one doesn't. I don't think that really has anything to do with it. But that would be an easy, easy alteration. You're just basically scooping this out. Um, yeah, and again, well, how is she standing? This leg looks to be kicked out, so she's got her weight on this one. Yeah, that could be adding to it a little bit. It's just a little bit too big through here, that's all. You can either take it out of the princess seam, like pinch it out here. And it also seems to really only be happening in the bodice and not necessarily in the skirt. But yeah, you could pinch it out here and then on this side, do it from the side seam or do it from both side seams. It's really up to you. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. This sleeve, this stuff that's happening here, I think it's because the sleeve is too long on the underarm seam. It needs to be, well, you know what it is. Actually, it's not length. It's circumference. If this were a little bit more full, which again comes from that sleeve cap just not being very full. Um, so if you made this a little bit squattier, a little bit flatter on your pattern piece, you would give yourself some more room here for your bicep. That's also what this is happening to. But again, not the end of the world. No, nobody else is going to notice this, but maybe me. Like I might be the only one in the world who would be that nitpicky, but, um, and I wouldn't be like, if you made this yourself, I would never, ever, ever point out your fit issues. I would just tell you it looks amazing. Unless you asked me, in that case, I would tell you for sure, but I'm not running around to everybody and being like, you know, <laughs> 
oh god how annoying would I be okay so Shally Charmeuse crepe double Georgette lightweight cotton blends yeah same thing I said about the other one you can do those but you can do something a little bit more as well and then the finished garment measurements are not included on this one so I can't give you that for the women's version okay now we've got a women's top raised waist top with shawl collar have partial button front two length options and sleeve variations top c has raised pleat on the sleeve okay so what they mean by a raised waist is basically kind of like an empire waist i don't know or does that have to be right under the bus is that why we're not calling it that um and then it has this little placket and this little shawl collar kind of sweet can be a little dowdy i will say but it looks good in this solid and then you've got your princess seams same sleeve problem see how all of this is pointing up here and then this is pointing down here and this is pointing up to here it's all pointing to this area right here so it's just not wide enough through there for her um same thing with like this and this all of this is pointing up 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 right to this area right here the rest of it you know loose fitting so it's fine there it is in like a little chambray i guess that looks very not young <laughs> This one has the, what is this? A little button situation happening. And then a little pleat in the back too. Oh wait, here's the sleeve. Oh. So when you, when you button the sleeve, it creates this pleat or that pleat is permanently in there. I think it's permanently in there. So these are non-functioning. I think so. I don't think they work. But then you have this little back pleat. And then I want to point out the, again, more pulling toward this area here. Same thing happening here, right? It's all pointing to this area being too small. Okay. So lightweight drapey. Sh well, actually not so much. Chambray linen. Those are not drapey. And then rayon silky types are drapey. Soft cottons, tin cell which is like a name brand of rayon. And then 22 to 28 and then 20, no, 22 to 28 and then 30 to 38. 42 inch bust up to a 60 inch bust with three and a half inches of ease. That seems appropriate. Okay. Now we have, this is the Mrs. version. Let me skip to that really quickly so I can show you her sleeve. Not a, not a wrinkle, not a wrinkle in sight. Um, just inherently plus size women have bigger biceps, duh. Um, so that's how you know what's happening there. And that's it. This is it in a linen. It is really nice in a crisper fabric. Are there any more pictures of her in it? Yeah. Um, this is because there's too much width in the back for her. So it's too big, actually. Um, but you can see how much more... I mean, I think this is her arm right here. So she has a good two inches of ease in the bicep. So that's what you need to have for the women's version also. Yeah, it also looks really long on her. This should be ending here, I think. So each one of them has their own set of issues. It's just, that's why we go through the trouble of, you know, looking at the measurements and picking our size and making alterations and all of that. Um, but you can, you can look at these, these sample makes and the sample models and get a pretty good idea of, of problems you're going to run into um, by looking at how they fit them. All right, we've got some Mrs. Jeans, low-waisted jeans with pockets, have two closure options, front fly zipper or 
button fly closure. View B has contrast outer panels, yoke, and waistband. Top stitching is optional. I wouldn't be surprised if these were small sizes. No, eight. It starts at eight. I thought this was going to be a four to 12 situation because they just seem so young, right? Eight to 16 and then 18 to 26. All right, so. Did it say, it didn't say anything about rise. This is hitting her, I mean, kind of low rise, but this, the, the rise of the pant is kind of long, which makes me think that these are just too big for her in the waist. Like, I just want to hike these up on her. And then if you did that, you'd have to make the waistband smaller. This also does look like a curved waistband. So I'm thinking that they meant for it to be low. But then they should have, this shouldn't be as long. You would need to shorten your rise in order to accomplish a low rise pant. Um, no hands in pockets. Thank you for that. But she is popping into this one hip. So it is a little bit hard to see how these slash pockets are, are sitting. But I mean, they look as good as they would anywhere else, ready to wear or otherwise. And then you've got this like, it's almost like fitted, 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 then like stovepipe into a baby flare. You know, it keeps getting a little bit wider and then it kicks out here at the bottom. And that I think is confirmed here too. It's not so much of a gradual flare as it is straight and then out. Yeah, this is a really beautiful seam line. And I love how it just keeps curving around the body. I'm excited to see what the back looks like. Yeah, very thoughtful in terms of just putting all of this together in one visual. Like your eyeball just really likes <laughs> that line. Okay, here's the back on her. Back rise looks okay. So it's just the front rise that seems a little bit off, but it is a low rise. I mean, here's her natural waist. See, it's the smallest part of her. So that's like one, two, easily three inches below the natural waist. I don't know if that's what they were going for. And then the pocket seems so small. Here's the, here's the pocket, right? Seems so little, itty bitty pocket. But this, all this looks good. This all looks normal. Um, not getting super strong wedgie vibes. Straight lines all throughout here. Yeah. So the line drawings on the back. Yeah, that is mimicked. Yeah, I think these are going to look really good on a lot of people. You just got to fix the rise. Other than that, you should be good to go. Well, assuming that you're assuming a lot of pant fitting stuff, but um, the rise, I think, is going to be a universal problem. And then the rest of it would just be getting the pants to fit your body. Okay, chambray, chino, cotton blends, denim, linen blends, poplin, twill. And then you'll need a little bit of lining for the waistband, I think. Just the waistband. Oh, and the pocket bags. Um, I'm surprised I don't see sateen here. I'm surprised I don't see like gabardine or yeah, there's a lot more options that live in this mid weight stable world. Linen blends. I think you would need a linen blended with cotton, like linen blended with rayon. That would be weird. Yeah, and cotton twill, cotton poplin. So none of the rayon blends. These would all be cotton or even polyester blends. But yeah, a really cool printed denim would be fun. Um, you could do lots of cool stuff. Okay, so jeans buttons. Um, depending on the number, the quantity, depending on the fly that you make, and then. A zipper. That's it.
um, 8 to 16, 18 to 26. That gives our, so normally it would say waist and then however, oh wait, sit one inch below the waist. That's not true. Not on her anyways. You guys could see clear as day that that wasn't what was happening. So yeah, either the rise of the back is too short. If it's truly intended to sit one inch below the waist, the rise of the back is way too short. And that's what's pulling them down. And that's what's giving her that little buckle right at her crotch line. So I would leave the front rise as it is and increase the back rise depending on what you need. All right, so... Waist, I don't even know where to begin in terms of fitting this waist. They're not even giving us the finished measurement on the waist. Okay, good. So the hip is zero ease. Zero ease. So I don't know about that. I mean, if these were like stretch, twill, stretch, sateen, stretch, blah, 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 stretch denim, that would make sense. But it, they're not all like that. So give yourself a little bit of wiggle room in the hip just so that you can like sit down, you know, without ripping anything. Okay. Now we have, we looked at that already. This, um, okay. Yeah. So if you've missed it, the nineties are here, right? Where this whole idea and concept of this, do you remember back in the day when we had the parachute pants and all the hems had that little toggle with the elastic and the waistbands had that too. And then you would have like some kind of detail, like on the side, like maybe a pocket that had that as it's like the top of the pocket. That is what this is. <laughs> I didn't love it back then. I don't really love it now, but here we are. So this is a cargo skirt with drawstring waistband, have side seam pockets with flaps and snap button closures. B and C have patch pockets and back vents. So the little toggly thing, big baggy cargo uh, pockets and maxi length. It's definitely a trend, right? This is not... This is trendy, which a lot of people want to see in the big five. They want the trends. They don't want the stuff that's just like the basics that look like everything else. They want the cool stuff. So that's what this is. So kudos to them for including something like this. Um, I will say the mini skirt is quite cute with the little flat pocket. They kind of miss that a little bit here because she's got her hand in it. But the mini version, I think I could rock out. Maybe because it doesn't have the big cargo pockets, it feels a little bit more approachable. But the rest of these are just the length variations. So mini, maybe right below the knee, and then maxi. And that's what the model is wearing. Here's the back. You know, if you want to hook yourself to something, here we go. Like maybe you're going to be suspended in the air later. You never know. So you'll need to get strapped in. Or maybe you want to hook your keys to this because you have a problem losing your keys. <laughs> Again, the pocket feels so narrow. Give me a wide pocket. Why? Like, I want a wider pocket for sure. This feels a little high, right? Maybe it's just me. But it feels like if she bent over, you, you would see some stuff. Um, and then again, the really big... I do like this pocket. Maybe on a jacket for me. I don't know about it being slapped onto my thighs. Okay. Fabric-wise, denim. Denim would be really cute. Nylons is what she's wearing. Poplin. Rayon. Depends on the weave. Sateen for sure, tinsel, and twill. Yeah, if it's a rayon twill weave, that's nice. If it's a rayon chalet, no. But I think denim, nylon, and twill are your most commonly used fabrics. And then you need a lot of notions. D-rings, cording, uh, grommets, cord stopper. 
So this is where you're going to spend all your money. This becomes very expensive here. So try to save some up here by maybe just doing like a denim. Or if you can find nylon for maybe you're like refashioning an old tent or tarp or something. I don't know. That's a terrible idea. But anyways, this gets really expensive. So, all right. So then we've got a, let's go to the hip, I think is the most fitted. So 32 and a half up to 48 and lots of ease in the hip. So four, three and a half inches of ease. That's actually not that much, but that seems appropriate. So I feel good about that. All right. Next, we've got Norris's unisex sweatshirt in two lengths. Comfy, casual sweatshirt goes well with everything. Pull over, oversized, raglan sweatshirt with rib trimmings includes two length variations and comes in sizes extra small to 2X, all in one. Yeah, raglan sleeve sweatshirt. That's it. Two lengths. That's the long. I wonder if that's like dress length. This is really long on her arms. I get it's supposed to be oversized, but that just looks like she just stole somebody's really, really too big sweatshirt. It looks okay up through here, but yeah, the sleeve is, the sleeve would throw me. I kind of wish she would have styled it as a dress because I want to see how long is V. Stretch knits like double knit, fleece, ponte, sweatshirt fleece, terry knits. And you rib knit trim and it's very oversized, like 17 inches of ease. So. All right, next. Oh gosh, I thought we were getting into costumes. What is this? Unisex jacket. Quilted shoulder detail jacket has contrasting collar band, snap button closure, and contrasting pockets with zipper closures. Back of jacket has a large zipper pocket. View B has contrast fabric in front and back yokes. Oh. Oh. This is quilted. And then this is all normal. Okay, so whenever I come across a pattern like this and it's like wackadoodle styling, I just close my eyes and I picture it in all denim. Just put it all in denim. Either the same color, you can do contrast colors, put it all in denim and see if some of the details start to kind of fade away and then it feels a little bit more wearable. I have no idea where I'd wear an orange, white, pink, yellow trimmed, anything but I'm not into bright colors so if this were all denim stuff maybe like I'm looking at this and picturing it all in denim I don't know I don't know I don't hate it maybe just I don't like it for me the back looks good I like the back so maybe the front just has too much. What's going on on the front? Like maybe the pockets are too much and this is too much. Like if you took all that away, then would it just be boring? I don't know. But I don't mind the back. The back's kind of cool. I don't know. Maybe this is like one of those, like, remember the 80s, like, windbreaker type of things? Is that what we're trying to do here? Cotton blends, denim fleece, ponte scuba, stretch wovens. What? I don't know, guys. This feels like too much and not enough all at the same time. It's like too much, but not enough of the right stuff maybe i 
I know people are going to make really cool versions of this though. So I'm really trying. I'm really trying. Anytime I take like long, like pregnant pauses like that, that's because like I'm, my wheels are turning. Like I'm trying very hard. <laughs> okay. Then you've got all your contrast fabrics, some batting, fusible. Yeah. Zipper, bias tape, zipper, snap, snaps. Oh boy. Okay. Let's see if this helps in a grayscale. Kind of a similar exercise as thinking of it all in denim. Were they trying to go for like a version of a quilt coat? Is that what they were trying to do? I feel like it doesn't have enough of, like, of an identity into any one category. It's like 80s trend plus quilt coat trend plus athleisure trend and it's not enough of either one of those categories to really belong in any of them so therefore it's just in its own category which i i know that some people appreciate that okay so then we've got stuffies stuffies a bag that you could hang from a tree <laughs> an apron and pants Okay, then we've got another apron, a doll or a bunny, doll clothes, not the baby harness, <laughs> the doll baby harness. Oh no, a medical sling. Okay, well you can make some really cute versions of that if you needed one. Plus also an oven mitt. Oh, like for your cast. That's kind of cute. Um, little girl's dresses, little girl's jacket, baby stuff. And then this stuff. Okay, so now we've got a whole slew of women's stuff just stuffed back here in the... No, we've seen this one before. Okay, so we will go through... Okay, we'll look at this for sure. Women's and jacket and knit leggings. So this is actually super cool. Corset style hooded jacket. Love that. That's very on trend. Optional boning, two sleeve band options. Jacket also offers two closure variations, either hook and eye zipper or zipper closure. And then the leggings are kind of like a, a throwaway, but um, the jacket is super cool. So see how it's got this seam here and then all this like optionally boned bodice that's very 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 cool right now um yeah love this i like how well hers flare out these don't look like they do that unless there's an opening there that you just can't see yeah you can make this out of a ton of different fabrics don't just leave it in athleisure land you could also make it out of like corduroys you can make it out of rib knits you can make it out of like all kinds of stuff yeah there is a little seam here so cute i like that actually yep there's the back the hood being lined i kind of hate that it just feels like very thick when they do that, um, or is it? You can see the seam. So maybe it's, it has to be lined. That There's no way that the inside of this camo fabric is that. But they just left it wrong side out? I don't know. Yeah, super cool, I love this. So double knits, fleece, jersey, stretch, velvet, sweatshirting, and then the, so that's for the jacket. You don't have to use stretch stuff. You can use non-stretch too because it's so loose fitting. You would just want to make sure that the waist is, you know, your waist plus like maybe an inch of ease. And then the leggings have to be stretched to pull on. So boning is optional. Um, separating zipper hook and eye, elastic, and two seven inch zipper. Oh, 
the leggings have zippers. I would just leave that off. That feels like it would make them pull down super heavy. Yeah. So the sizing on this is 10 to 18 only. That is, I mean, it's a roomy bust. So let's go to the waist, 25 to 32 inch waist. That's not a lot. Not a lot. The hip goes to 42 inches. Then again, this says body measurements. So this is a misprint, right? Oh, oh, and then women's too. Okay, okay, okay. So Mrs. Sizes 10 to 18, women's 20 to 38. Yeah, okay. So that's all of them. So then the waist goes actually up to 54 and a half. Great, love that. Yeah, three size ranges, size categories. Awesome. Okay. Next up, we have vintage. Not quite. We've got this little dress. Mrs. Knit dress. How comfy. One shoulder dress has gathered side cutout detail. Gathered shoulder, which can be made with or without a sleeve. And the length variations. View A has an asymmetrical hem. Why is this hiding way down here in La La Land below all the stuffed animals? This is super cute. Take me on a cruise. Send me to like the French Riviera. Yes. And I don't normally love a asymmetrical shoulder situation. You guys know this. I just don't think it's very flattering. But this one seems to come up pretty high and would cover what I like to call a chicken cutlet. <laughs> you know that little piece of like, I don't know, fat that's right here? That's my chicken cutlet. And I don't like for that to be exposed. So normally these these cause that for whatever reason to poke out more than it normally. It's just more obvious, I guess. It's always there, but it's a little more obvious. This seems like it would hide that a little bit. And you can tell too that there's elastic in this. So it's, you know, being contoured to the body as it is here. The one shoulder does make it dressier to me. Like, would I wear this to Target? I don't think so. Um, so that means it's relegated for like a date night or, and I don't, we just don't go on fancy, fancy dates. Um, even my girls' nights are not, like, I don't go clubbing or anything like that. Um, so it'd be, like, just for vacation. So maybe, maybe, maybe you could figure out a way to add a strap, and I think that would make it a little bit more casual. Like, she's ready for a night out on the town. She's like, let's go. Cute. And then this one does start to feel a little toga-esque. Um, so just be mindful of that when you're picking your fabric, like to not use like a white cotton because then it, that would be, be like, oh, I just got out of bed and I just grabbed my sheet and wrapped it around me. Cute though. Okay, so stretch knits only, bamboo knit, interlock jersey, modal, rayon knit, rib knit would be nice, stretch velvet. Just a lot of elastic, twill tape, and bias tape. Yeah, all of that makes perfect sense. Um, 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26 on the size range. They're doing a lot better with the sizes. Don't you guys agree? Um, and then negative ease or zero ease. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So the bust has negative 30, negative half inch of ease. The waist has zero inches of ease. So that's how you know it's going to be fitted to your body and not start to feel tent like. So I really appreciate that. You could even go more negative ease in the bodice, I think. Um, like if you went more negative, it would just be, hold on, let me go back to her front view. Is that all we got from her? Wow, okay. Um, it would be cl even closer fitted through here. So if you're using like a rib knit, for example, that has a lot of stretch to it, you can go down even more to make sure that that rib is really being contoured to your body versus like a cotton jersey, which doesn't have as much stretch. 
you would want to stick with just the half inch negative ease. That's cute. I can see myself getting that one. These last two have got me more excited than anything else so far. Okay, now we're going to go through the vintage dresses. I am still doing the vintage to modern thing. Um, the holidays just kind of got in the way of that, but I am still doing that. I have a really cute idea for this month um, that actually uses a pattern from the last, like the winter releases. So that's probably how it will be. I will be calling back to the release prior. But this is a 1960 Jiffy's dress sewing pattern. The collarless dress with low round neckline has back zipper. Um, view one and two have back front and back waistline darts. View one is sleeveless with a slit in the left side seam, ankle length. A view two and three have short set in sleeves. View three is worn with a ribbon sash. Okay. So this is a Jiffy pattern. I love these because look, this is all it is. Three pattern pieces or just some, or just two. But you have the low round neckline they mentioned. You have this little, I guess, French dart in the front, not French, fish eye in the front. And then you can tie it off or not. You can have it sleeved or not. There's also a little dart here. And then the longer version has this. Really simple, classic looking dress. And the backs all have fisheye darts. They have neckline darts and an invisible back zipper. Well, probably not in vintage in invisible, probably a regular zipper. Um, all of your mid-weight wovens, even some heavier weight wovens. Yeah. Uh, view one, also an eyelash metallics. What is that? View two and three in double knits, lightweight wools, blends. Yeah. Really just about anything you can make these dresses out of. So a 22 inch zipper. Yeah, not invisible. Although you could use invisible if you wanted. And then seam binding. 6 to 14, 16 to 24. Um, 3 inches of ease in the bust. 7 in the waist. 1 in the hip. Yikes. That's not true. I lied four in the hip. That's much better. Okay. Cute. Simple. Okay. Now we've got this reversible coat. Another Jiffy pattern. Worn reversible or not. <laughs> I think don't know what like what a weird way to say that um has collar and optional top stitching trim below elbow length kimono sleeve with optional turn back cuffs have notch detail purchase tie belt may be worn at waistline purchase that means it's not included so yeah lots of pretty seaming here coming from the shoulders that's the thing about jiffy it may just be two pattern pieces three pattern pieces but they make the most of them right Look how cute the little cuff is turned back with that little notch. So sweet. And that's your optional belt. So are we going to get the back? Okay, so we get a line drawing of the back. It's just the same shoulder seam and then the center back. That's it. But there is a, sle a separate sleeve, so there should be a line through here somewhere. Broadcloth, cotton blends, damask, cotton homespun, corduroy, double knits, flea, blah, blah, blah. Mohair, mohair. Wow. Okay. Really lots, lots of options. Okay. Um, sizing wise, we have a 31 inch bust, but it has, gosh, 14 inches of ease. So the bust, waist, and hip are all the same. It's literally a straight line down. So the hip would be the closest fitting for me anyways. And that still has 12 inches of ease, 11 and a half or 12 inches of ease. So very roomy little coat. Uh, with all that considered, I don't know. I might make it based off of my high bust, whatever size that ends up being. It may seem very small, but remember, we've got so much ease. And you really want the neckline and shoulder to fit the best. And then the rest drapes away from you. 
or not even away. It just drapes down you. All right. The last one is this skirt and jacket. Be one of this simple to make fitted jacket is styled with three quarter sleeves cut in one with the bodice. So that's a grown on sleeve tabs at the neck and sleeve cuff button sleeve cuffs button to the jacket. View two jacket features a small collar and cuffs. The easily made full skirt is styled with soft pleats and zipper closing at center back. Contrast ribbon scarf trims for view one jacket. Oh gosh, so much to say. Okay. Oh, look at the tabs that hold the bow. Wow. Okay. Cute. And then same thing, these little tabs here for the sleeve. Or you can do this little turn back number. Either way, they're fitted because they have the waist darts and the bust darts. And then you have this skirt fitted at the waist and then big, big uh, pleats. Although this probably has a petticoat under it or that's how they would have worn it back then. Um, so depending on the fabric you use, it may or may not be this full. What a vibe this is though. Wow. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you can get a real good idea of the shape of the jacket here. Um, yeah, again, lots and lots and lots of fabric options. It is lined somewhere. Maybe the jacket's lined. Yeah, lined jacket. That's cool. Uh, shoulder pads, nine buttons, your ribbon scarf. So you do purchase that ribbon scarf and then you tie it through yourself. That's kind of actually pretty cool. Um, Pair of rounded shoulder pads. Oh, we went through that. Uh, buttons. Okay, great. So big size range here. Really focusing on extending the size range of the vintage patterns. I love that. That gives us a, let's go with the waist. 23 inch to 39 inch waist. Um, no finished garment measurements. Included on the back of the envelope, I should say. They are somewhere, just not for anywhere we can see right now. All right, and with that, that brings us to, these were all last year's early spring patterns, I think. Yeah, for sure. Okay, wow, lots of new patterns from Simplicity. Overall, I had positive things to say about most of them. I certainly don't need most of them, but there's some cute stuff in here. Um, yeah, if I were, yeah, for sure. I, th this is a good collection, good, solid, strong collection. I think that each pattern will do equally well. It doesn't feel like one is necessarily a standout. Um, they're all pretty much equally as accessible as the next. So, um, that's, that's good and solid for me. That means somebody will find something that they love. Let me know what you guys think of this collection. Um, what you'll be buying, if anything jumped out at you, if you know you had an idea for something you wanted to share, leave all that in the comments. And um, yeah, that'll do it for me. I'll see you all very soon. Bye.